Hey and welcome back to another video. So in this video today, what we're going to do is we're actually going to break down the property wrappers that you use in Swift UI state and data flow, such as state object, observed object, and environment object. Now it's also worth noting that I actually already have videos on each one of these where we discuss the use cases and how you know we use them. But think about this video as a video where we'll discuss the purpose and where you'd want to use each one. So you could use this video as a reminder to check to see that you're using the correct property wrapper in your use case. So let's get straight into the video. So we briefly touched on state object and it's an object that allows you to create your own custom source of truth, which you can observe. So when you create a state object, it only creates one instance of itself. So even if the view is re-invalidated, the state object won't be recreated. This is the difference between this and observed object, which we will discuss soon. So let's actually look at this with the example on the screen. So you'll see here on point one, we have an observable object defined here. So this is our source of truth called people view model, which holds an array of items. Then on point two, we create an instance of our source of truth within the relevant view. So this relevant view is our content view. And on point three, we actually read from our source of truth, people view model, and reflect the changes within the UI. So when you're actually working with state object, the general principles you want to follow are, so if you're building a source of truth that is only needed for that single view, i.e. if you had a view model for executing requests that's only related to the view that you're working to, working on, then this should be a state object within that view. Also as well, if you're building a source of truth that will be used at the root of your application, i.e. you have a view model for managing a user session, you want this view model to be created using a state object property wrapper as well. And we'll also discuss this with environment objects later. And also as a general rule of thumb, you want to create an instance of your observable objects. So any classes that are marked with the observable object property wrapper, you want to want to create them using the at state object property wrapper. So the next, the next property wrapper that I want to discuss is the observe object. So this property wrapper can be used to create an instance of your observable object, but it's actually advised that you don't actually use this unless you need to support something below iOS 14. So if you need to support iOS 13, then you can actually only create an instance of your observable object by using the at observed object property wrapper. The observed object property wrapper allows us to pass our observable object between different views. So what is the benefit of this? Well, if we had a parent view and we wanted its child views to be able to access the source of truth, we can achieve this by using the observed object property wrapper on the child. Now this child would have to out, now this child would have access to the published properties available to it and can listen to changes as well as perform actions that are available via the observed observed object also. So if we look at our example here, we have our observable object similar to our first example, people view model, and we also have an instance of it created for us with our source of truth within our content view. And if you look on point four, this time we actually have our own custom child view called people view, where we inject our source of truth, our people view model into it. And we're able to use this, do this by using the observed object property wrapper, which we declare on point five. So this property wrapper will allow our view to accept the source of truth, which is its parent content view. And then finally on point six, we actually read from our source of truth and actually display this on the UI. So when you're working with observed object, the general rule of form is, if you have a child view, which needs access to a state object that is isolated to that one single view, then you actually wanna pass this down using the observable ob observed object property wrapper. And also if you need to create an instance of your observable object on iOS 13, then this is the only time that you should use it. So finally, the last property wrapper that I want to discuss is the environment object property wrapper. So this object property wrapper has a similar purpose to observed object. The only difference is that this is used for views that need to access the observable objects or source of truth at a root level. So what do I mean by this? So let's say if we have a class that allows us to monitor if a user has made app purchases, it's possible that different screens will need a different functionality based on this. So we may need each screen to read from our source of truth to ensure that they get consistent data and reflect the appropriate changes. We would actually declare an instance of our observable object at the root of our app using the state object property wrapper, as you can see on point three. 
and then for any views which need access to this we will use the environment object property wrapper and the modifier to inject this into those views as you can see on point four so it's also worth noting that any subsequent child views within the view that has used the environment object modifier will automatically gain access to this observable object as you can see on point five our content views now has access to the environment object um which we declared purchase view model which is a purchase view model and also on point seven you can actually see that our purchase view model is actually able to read the values from our root source of truth and reflect changes from the ui on point eight so when would you want to use the environment object well the general principles you want to follow are if a view needs access to the root level observable object and also if your child views within their parent view also need access to the root level observable object this is when you want to use the at environment of uh, property wrapper so i hope that cleared up when you'd want to use state object observed object and environment object and if you have any feedback for me i'd love to hear it in the comment section below also as well if you haven't already then i really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up by hitting the um, like button and subscribe to the channel as well as hitting the notification bell so you can get updates whenever i release a new video that's everything from me i'll catch you on a bit deuces